voting is really important, but understand what the politicians are trying to do to you when they try to influence you one way or another. We are live, Sales Ascender. Happy Tuesday, November 3rd. It is election day. I am freaking excited because I don't know what's about to happen to our wonderful nation here after today because we're going to make the general election decision on who's going to be running our country. So first and foremost, this is another high ticket tune up today, but I'm going to go a little bit off script here and dive into a couple of things that I think are going to be super valuable for a lot of people here. So if you haven't voted yet, go vote right? You have the power. Here's how the power works. Just so if you guys don't understand, always vote, right? Like you have a voice. And so if you don't understand how the voting thing works, here's a quick breakdown. There's this thing called the Electoral College. The Electoral College is designed out of, there's 538 seats in the Electoral College because of all the seats that are in the House of Representatives and the Senate and some of the outlying places, the Districts of Columbia and places like that. So that's how they created this number 538. 270 of those seats need to vote in favor of one president or another in order for them to become president. So what does that mean? How are you involved when you're actually doing the voting, right? So when you go to the general election and you put your ballot in there, it goes to the state. The state then counts the tally and based on population, they get a certain amount of electoral votes per state. And so basically, for example, like California has 55 electoral votes because they have so much of a population in there. So anyway, long story short, when you put your election vote into the bin, it goes to the state, they calculate it, and they say, out of like, for example, the president, if you have over 50% uh, voting for one candidate versus another, then that candidate wins all of the electoral votes in that specific state. So that's how it works. It's like a group of 538 people represent the many in the country. Now, there's a couple of things that I dislike about that whole system. However, it is the system that it is. And until they make amendments to the Constitution, it's going to be the same way. So um, I wanted to share that because then you kind of understand like you do have a vote power. And so what happens is these 538 people will look at the data and they'll say, OK, my state's voting this way, then when I go on December 10th to actually vote for the president out of the 538 states, if you're in the electoral college, then your vote should be with your state. Now, sometimes they vote against what the state says, sometimes they don't, but the fact of the matter is, is your voice counts. And so that's my effort today is just saying, hey, if you haven't voted, today's the day, go vote because the future of our country is in your hands. Whether you vote one way or another doesn't matter, just vote please do it, right? Because it's very important, especially this time around, as we all know, we've been seeing everything that's going on. But today I want to talk about sales and politics. I think this is a topic that's super valuable to anybody that's listening to this. How does it work? Why do, why, Sean, like sales and politics, what does that even mean? Yes, sales are in politics. And the reason why President Trump or Vice President, former President Biden has able to been able to actually get you to move in one direction or another is because they're pushing on something called the action threshold. So what's the action threshold? The action threshold is involved. It's made up of three things. Okay. So the first thing that the action threshold is made up of is positives. If I decide to go in this direction and I take, okay, sorry, the definition of action threshold is the point in time in which your prospect or yourself or anybody else makes a decision to go one way or another. That's the action threshold. In sales, you can actually lower the action threshold and increase the reasons for taking action at the same time, which is really cool. And this is kind of when we're getting into psychology of selling, this is important. This is how all of these politicians use this against you without you knowing it. So I think sharing what it is and so you know how it works is valuable. So um, the, the, the action threshold is made up of three things. The first thing is made up of positives. So in your mind, if you're like, Hey, I'm going to go vote for this president. What are all the positive things that are going to happen? Right. If you think about that, like that means, uh, Oh, I've heard this. I learned this. I did all this. Like, these are the things that are going to help me and benefit my life. The second reason is the negatives. So if you have a lot more negatives than positives, just because of all the records that have been put in your head or you just the way you feel like if that outweighs one piece or the other, it's going to sway your decision to move one or another. But how do we lower the action threshold? How do we how did the politicians that we've been watching, like actually lower it to go one way or another? 
It's by breaking limiting beliefs. So that's the third piece of it. So there's positives that you already have in your head of what it's going to do for you if you make a decision going one way or another. You have the negatives, same thing, one way or another. And then literally these limiting beliefs. Now in sales, when you're in a sales conversation, one of the most important things you can do is always start with the positives, encourage your prospect with their dreams and understand where they're trying to go and take their business. And you start pulling out the positives, give a little bit of love and enforcement, reinforcement on those positive items, and then go through some of the negative stuff, right? That's great. And you go through positives, negatives, and then you dive into these limiting beliefs. Most sales people, traditional salespeople miss the limiting beliefs, which is probably the most important thing and what causes people to actually jump over the threshold, which which is valuable. In the house, uh, facts. So we got, there you go, facts. Yep. So so let's talk about limiting beliefs. What did the politicians do? Now, back in uh, 1980, when Ronald Reagan was battling Jimmy Carter, one of the things they would come out and talking about limiting beliefs in sales, politics and sales, that's what we're talking about today. The debaters, right? They would ask the question to either, you know, up and coming Ronald Reagan or the current president at the time was uh, President Carter. And they would ask him a question. And that question back in the 80s would always be what they stood for, their values, like where they're going towards, what they're marching behind. And that it allowed a lot of people to get behind them and push forward because it was always based on the positives. Now, that was back in the 1980s. Psychology wasn't even like that big of a thing at the time. But some of the better politicians understood positive, negative, limiting belief as the action threshold. And that's how that works. So um, what they did is they would they would say, hey, I stand for this. I believe this. This is what I'm going to work on with the country. Da, 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 da. And then if you believe that and you're like, yes, I resonate with that. I'm going to get behind that president. So that was how they used to debate back in the 80s. Now you guys have all watched these debates recently. Like they're crazy, right? There's never very much positivity about anything other than, hey, I'm going to create a few jobs in this sector or this or that. The next thing, they all hit on the negatives and they talk crap about each other and they say, oh, this person's done this. That makes them a bad person. Like you should run away from that. So now let's talk about that for a second. There's motivators. There's positive motivation. There's negative motivation, right? There's what we call, there's buying emotion. So buying emotion would be literally pain, right? We talk about pain, pain points, finding the problems that people have, et cetera, et cetera. This is one of the more effective ways to sell. Why? Because people want are more, people are more likely to run away from pain, especially if it's pain in the present, than they are to go towards pleasure, which is pleasure either now or in the future. So just literally, that's how it works. So why do the presidents now from back in the eight, like back in 1980 versus today, what's the cataclysmic shift that's happened is that they are now focused so much on all the negativity and saying, oh, this person did this and he's a bad person and or whatever. Right. And so now you're listening and all these negative records start forming in your mind and the limiting beliefs get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then literally you're like, oh, I can't vote for that person because of all the bad things, or I can't vote for this person because of all the bad things. So there is this balance that these politicians use all the time of like, hey, I stand for this. Oh, by the way, this person is bad because of whatever, right? So it goes positive, negative, and then they start hitting on limiting beliefs. This is the part where I believe most politicians actually convince or persuade most people to follow them, right? Because they're talking about ideas that have been resonating in you, in your head from all the upbringing and everything that you've ever had until this point. So they'll talk about things about like raising taxes and all this other stuff. And then if you've heard something in the past from your parents about taxes being good or bad or indifferent, then maybe it'll sway you to go one way or another with the action threshold, right? Because literally what it comes down to is there's several different layers of voters. If you're just the average voter, you're going to say, oh, what does that person stand for? Oh, he hates on this person all the time. I don't like that. I'm going to make this uh, decision here. Subconsciously, your limiting beliefs are saying exactly which way you're going to vote. So the people, the sales and politics, which is really important to think about, is like they're going to do all three of these things to you and without you even knowing it. So be aware that it's happening to you. And I think it's really valuable that you do your own research and make your own decision based on your uh, you know, life. Now, one, one of the things that's interesting to me is people say, hey, Sean, well, yeah, you're right. Like there's positive people and then there's negative people that are running for all these different offices. But at the end of the day, like I don't really care because it's not going to affect me. I hear that all the time, right? Now, unfortunately, that's not really the case because the vote, some of the vote is for the president, right? Some of the vote is for Congress. 
and you make these votes and then those votes actually go to your state and then the electoral college looks at the data and then goes and actually has the formal election to pick the president. That's how it works right now until they make an amendment, like I said. But the one thing that no one ever really talks about unless you've seen local media is literally all these other things that are on the ballot for your particular state. Right. And now, for example, in Nevada, there were some really valuable things. There was a one about marriage between man and man, woman, woman, that kind of thing. There was one about that. Nevada, it currently is the only state that doesn't actually acknowledge any marriage between same genders. So for me, like I'm totally not for that. I want same sex marriages to be a thing because I don't believe anyone should judge that. And there shouldn't be any law about that. Right. So like that's really valuable to me. That's one of the reasons why I went to vote. Not so much for the president. Of course, you got to choose the leader of the country, but then all these other things that come into your state. There's another one about our governor having veto power. Again, the last state in the whole of all 50 that have. So what I'm saying here, guys, is this is like voting is really important, but understand what the politicians are trying to do to you when they try to influence you one way or another. They are trying to hit on a little bit of positive where you're going. What are they trying to do? Here's a little bit of negative. Oh, look at this candidate. He's doing really bad things. And then all these limiting beliefs. Oh, the mail system's corrupt. Oh, okay. Well, if you heard that, right, that's totally a rumor. Yeah, you know, maybe they've made it more, you know, like they've made it more difficult to actually count votes and do the thing like that. But again, it's a limiting belief. Why? Because it's been proven that it works. Yeah, there's a little bit of tolerance where some of the mail doesn't get counted and, and so be it. But at the end of the day, like it's important. So understand that those limiting beliefs like presidents and politicians and people that are campaigning to do things, to grow, to get into places of power where they can actually make some bigger changes um, they're doing those three things to you. And I want you to be truly aware of what they are. So again, they're going to hit on positives. They're going to hit on negatives. And then they're going to drop all these ads and everything else about limiting beliefs that they know that you probably already have. How do you counter this as a person looking at this whole thing? And well, what should I do, Sean? Well, literally think to yourself, like, if I have a limiting belief, like if I believed, for example, the mail system was flawed, I could just take people at their face word but again, like who does that really? Like you shouldn't probably do that making decisions. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So when I, if, if that was a limiting belief that I would have, I would go do research and understand like, is the postal system flawed? What are the areas of tolerance? What is it? I've done my own research and now I can say, hey, listen, like, okay, I know this is a good way. I'm going to go do this. This is my, now my action of threshold is lowered again. And I can go and I can trust the mail voting thing or whatever, if that was one of the things that I'd had a limiting belief around. And so again, Today, I just wanted to go a little bit different off the cuff and share with you. It's like there's this thing called an action threshold. You have it. I have it. Everybody has it. And it's super valuable to know how it works. There's three things that dictate it. The positives that are going to benefit you if you make a decision for it. The negatives if you make a decision against it or for it. Right. And then lastly, those limiting beliefs. And I think most people in don't know that there's all those limiting belief pieces and seriously, like as a sales professional, as a sales ascender, as going into this world of sales and prospecting and learning the art and the science, understand this, right? Because when you understand the psychology behind this, you can actually make decisions that are going to put things in front of people that are in their best interest to take action on. Now, remember, always for good, never for evil. The stuff that I teach literally is always for good, never for evil. I make that agreement with every single person I ever talk to because the stuff we use, like if you looked at the Wolf of Wall Street, for example, the Wolf of Wall Street, he literally used it for evil. He ripped off millions of dollars from wealthy investors and put them into these bogus investments. Like you can do bad things with the knowledge that I'm teaching you. So just always for good, never for evil. That's what I'll always preach. And remember the action threshold is something that you should deploy in your sales business right now. It works in politics. It works in your business. It works in my business, works in everybody's business in your sales conversations, literally positives, negatives, limiting beliefs. Remember that structure as you go into all of your selling conversations and be aware if you hear an indication of one of those three things, take a second, don't gloss over it, Stop in the conversation and say, hang on a sec. Tell me more about that. You think this is really going to be valuable for you. What do you mean? I don't understand. Act like a dummy on purpose is a great sales rule, right? And then when they say negative, oh, man, if I do this, this is going to happen to my business. Oh, man, that sounds empathy and sympathy. Like, that sounds really challenging. Like, can you tell me a little bit more? How does that work? And then they're going to say, oh, well, this, this, and this would happen in my world. Oh, I get it. That makes sense. 
take it down into the limiting beliefs. Hang on a sec. Like, where did you learn that? How do you know that that's actually going to happen? Question it, right? And all of a sudden, people are going to be like, huh, how did I learn that? And they're going to think that question. They're going to come up with an answer. Meanwhile, guess what? You're formulating your next question as a sales professional while they're trying to think of an answer to a really tough question that you just gave them. So the secret in going through and lowering people's action thresholds is playing these three things against each other. If they're positive, reinforce. If they're negative, question, make it uncertain in their mind. And then the limiting beliefs, you got to get it to a place called emotional impact, right? There's three levels of impact. There's surface or subsurface, and then there's emotional. When you get somebody to an emotionally impacting place, they will lower their action threshold and they will make a decision to go in, in what's going to be in the best interest of them and their business. And so that's what I wanted to leave you with today, guys, because I feel like it's really valuable. Today is voting day, right? So go out and vote. That's why I brought sales and politics together, because I thought the action threshold is something that a lot of people don't know about. I actually learned this concept from the Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort himself, of course, back in the, the 80s and 90s when he was doing this. And then he got put in jail for several years. And he came out with a book, obviously went through that. And I bought the course. I learned his stuff. Why? Because I wanted to see what he was doing on the negative side of the equation. I learned all this stuff and I was like, okay, that makes sense to me. I get it. Some of these points I pulled, one of them is the action threshold. It did come from him. I didn't create it. And, and I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful way to really get some like good idea around like how to shape or form a sales conversation. And if you hit those three buckets in a sales call, you're going to do really well, like better than you've probably done before. So with that said, I hope it helps you today. I love you. Happy fighting, ascension, prospecting, and sales. It's an art and a science. I hope you learn the art and the science. If you haven't yet, let's get on a connection call. Hit me up because I want to talk with you. And that's one of the things that I want to share, right? Like it's my job. My mission is to literally help people that or guide people into a place where they can create income on demand, where they can have a predictable revenue source in their business. Because if you don't have that, you're always stressed out about it. Money is a big stressor, as you may or may not know. You've probably experienced it before. It causes a lot of detriment to a lot of places and people and things, but there's a way to prevent it. Just get good at marketing, prospecting, and selling, and you can win the game. I know because I spent a lot of money to do it and I got pretty good at it and I sorted all those things out for us. And you can do the same thing. We're here to help. With that said, I love you. I will talk with you guys tomorrow. Go fight, win. That's what we do.